Hello and welcome back to The Forge. I'm the Artsmith and today I'll be showcasing my process in making the water starter line for my hypothetical Pokemon region. If you haven't yet seen my videos on the fire and grass starters, I recommend checking them out. To catch you up to speed, I'm making these starters prehistoric themed, but I don't think the whole region will be prehistoric. I might make a future video detailing the world building of this region, but we'll see how popular these videos get before I go that far. Alright, let's get into it. So as you may know by now, the unifying theme of my three starters is that they choose you and follow you home, with the added twist that they aren't commonly picked by trainers. They're misfits, the outcasts of my region. But with your help, they can evolve into kick-ass prehistoric companions. In the water starter's case, it lingers around you like a bad omen. I named this cutie Plysicle, combining Plesiosaur, Icicle, and Skull for reasons you'll see in a moment. I originally started designing this Pokemon a year ago, but I quickly lost steam. So I guess technically this was the first design I worked on? Tendora was the first I finished, but Plysicle is where my idea to make a hypothetical Pokemon region originated. You'll see a lot of trial and error here with me trying to figure out how to create a Pokemon. I remember getting stumped and just slapping an ice cube on its back and calling it a day. When I came back to it a year later, I reworked it from the ground up. I had to really make this look and feel like a Pokemon, so I took inspiration from one of my favorites, Cubone, and put a skull on its head. Except in this case, the skull is implied and made out of ice. That's when the concept of this Pokemon began to take shape. I love the idea of sailors coming across a floating skeleton in the ocean and piecing out of there before they could realize it was actually just a Pokemon swimming up to them. I also worked some hearts into its pattern to emphasize how loving this Pokemon is. I'll play around with the symbology in its evolutions. I think the water starter goes through the roughest character arc out of all my starters, so prepare yourselves. Plysicle, the Bad Omen Pokemon Ice formed around Plysicle's head and back bear a resemblance to a skull and spine. When it comes close to the surface, it looks like a floating corpse in the water. Unfortunately, because of this, most trainers do not choose this Pokemon. Instead, like an omen, it follows humans in search of warmth. Plysicle is naturally friendly and profoundly lonely. All it wants is a chance to prove itself. I really wanted the middle form of this Pokemon to be sad. If people think of Plysicle as a bad omen, then its second stage would be mourning those lost at sea, taking the rumors spread by humans as fact, and blaming itself for all the misfortune. Elasmorn is a combination of an Elasmosaurus and the word mourn. This is the stage where I broke its heart. Literally. Its surface patterns reflect its inner turmoil. I even reincorporated the shine on Plysicle's head and made it resemble a tear. It's true sad boy hours here. I also discovered a common theme among my starters, and that's that they all grow horns in their second stage. I guess I like giving my creatures a means of offense? Let's just face it, horns are cool and they make any design look cool. I don't care. <laughs> Oh hey, did you like the shiny version of Plysicle? I want the grind to get a shiny Pokemon feel 100% worth it, so I put a lot of time into these shiny forms. For this line, I wanted to make the ice look like amber, and I couldn't be happier with that decision. I love this shiny so much, but what do you think? Would you grind for it? Elasmorn, the grieving siren Pokemon. Elasmorn is haunted by those who have perished at sea. It believes the false rumors humans spread that it is responsible for the tragedies due to the negative aura it brings. This Pokemon is incredibly sensitive to causing harm to others, making them not ideal in a Pokemon battle. However, if given the support and encouragement it needs, Elasmorn can begin channeling power from the spirits that haunt it. Before we get to the final evolution, let me just shamelessly plug for a second. Do you like shows like Avatar The Last Airbender? Then you should check out the pilot episode of The Last Fire Sprite on my YouTube channel. The crew and I put a lot of work into it and I hope to make it a full-fledged animated series, but we need your help to make that happen. Alright, alright, back to the Fakemon. So the common theory about water starter Pokemon is that they are all based on some kind of weapon. Blastoise is a cannon, Greninja is a shuriken, Inteleon is... well, a gun. I went into this design process wanting to incorporate a scythe some way into the design. It's actually what made me decide on a Poisisaur for the base animal. I wanted to incorporate the scythe into its head and maybe its tail? I named this powerhouse Cryptide, a combination of the words Crypt, Riptide, and Cryptoclitus. Crypto... Cryptoclitus. It has Crypt as a pronoun, see? 
Apparently, I have no idea how balancing works. Yeah, when I posted this on Instagram, I learned that I almost had a perfectly balanced starter trio, so long as I made the water starter a fighting dual type, or if I made its second type in ice and Suaradon's ground, that would be another perfect type trio. <laughs> but uh, I think it's best going forward that you guys know that I have almost zero clue about the rules and functionality of Pokemon. I'm making designs that inspire me, and I really wanted to make a ghost water type, okay? And I mean, it fits with the scythe imagery and everything. But yeah, despite the type imbalance, I'm so happy with this design. It's just as badass as I aimed for while still looking like it could be your friend. The ice on its body feels more like armor, and you can just feel the confidence Cryptid exudes. It got over what people were saying about it and became the absolute best it could be because of it. The heart symbolism now lives on within Cryptide's pose. That looks enough like a heart, right? Cryptide, the Ocean Harbinger Pokemon. After fusing with its spiritual side, Cryptide has an inane sense for danger and uses its spectral abilities to prevent disasters. If it's too late, it can use its razor-sharp mask and tail to cut through debris to reach survivors. Coastal towns often give shelter to wild Cryptides to repay them for their protection. Cryptide is emotionally resonant with its trainer, providing a shoulder to lean on when needed. Despite the ice it wears across its body, Cryptide is exceptional at giving warm hugs that can extinguish any tear. So what do you think? If you chose Plicycle as your starter, are you pleased with its final form? I had so much fun coming up with these designs and sort of writing a character arc for a Pokemon as it evolves. I kept it up with the other two starters as well. We start with a little guy that desperately wants to find companionship, but is rarely if ever chosen because of certain traits it possesses. Then we see how these traits create an unhealthy attachment style with their trainer. Then finally we see the Pokemon fully matured and at peace with who it is. There we have it, all three starters completed. All I have left to ask now is, who do you choose? The huggable Cactops, the loyal Tindoro, or the lonely Plicycle? I honestly am torn. I love them all so much, and I hope it's an equally difficult decision for you. So that concludes my starter series. Let me know if you want to see more of these videos. I have ideas for some Route 1 Fakemon, but we'll see how it goes. Make sure to go watch the Fire and Grass starter videos if you haven't yet, and check out the last Fire Sprite. This has been the Artsmith, and thank you for coming to the Forge.